If you grew up in the 60s, you were a product of the courage to go to space. It was the search for the unknown. Why do we make the effort to explore that which we don't know? When you approach the land, you feel like you're part of the space program. It's the endless landscape. The piece of Tippet Rise is called Pioneer from the satellite series. I was always attracted to exploration and risk, even though my own personal life was very much of, of uh, someone who was protected. Now you should make the triangle supports. When you grow up in a row house in an urban center, you never really experience what exploration is. Within that protected environment, there becomes this spark of curiosity. And I think it's more the curiosity of the kid that has never been satisfied. It was back in the 80s when I went to New York and saw monumental bridges and scaffolding projects. Those were moments that were fueling this sort of passion that I had for linear construction because they reminded me of when I was a kid in summer camp and we took a trip to Hershey Park and I saw this mammoth wooden handmade roller coaster for the first time and how overwhelmed I was with that as an object. Elmer's Glue had a competition and it said, do something creative with Elmer's Glue. And I built a, a model of the Comet roller coaster out of toothpicks. I mean, look, just take a look at this pattern. When you see things sometimes that are very beautiful, you forget about the function. Or when you see something that is extremely functional, you forget about the aesthetics. When you're evolving, as any person does, you have these moments where you experience things and you have no idea into what file they go into. And then ultimately, 10, 20, 30 years later, they surface. The beauty of working in wood and in framing is that for me, it's the most tactile type of construction. Satellite creates this visual constellation. It's intended to furnish us with that whole notion of an object in the lunar landscape. Similar to what we experienced in the early days of the space race, when we saw these massive lunar landscapes penetrated by these small satellite structures. I think that the responsibility on my end is to try to preserve or try to create a new narrative between that which is built by man and that which exists in nature. Every one of my outdoor projects has been an exercise in obsession. You have to be able to create those pockets of intimacy because within intimacy, we create something which is human, something that we can relate to, something we can create that's our own story, our own past, our own present, and potentially our future. And nature is the hardest environment in which to show an object because it can be overwhelming. But it's a challenge to put something in nature and create a dialogue that is neither subservient nor aloof. And I think that that's the challenge for the artist. You don't want to bring a piece here that just attempts to satisfy its personal ego against the land, nor do you want the piece to be intimidated by the land. The artist has a responsibility to consider all that surrounds it. The texture of life is a lot richer when you harness the unexpected. You have to constantly be killing the voice that's inside of you that says, don't do this, to risk everything. That is the nature of exploration. We cannot ensure 
how things will unfold. We never know. We don't know what's going to happen. And that's what happened when we landed on the moon.